Doug Sanders has been painting for almost two decades while living a life of homelessness and drug addiction. I started I was always into art ever since I could walk and talk. Originally, I just wanted to be a commercial artist. But um, I was found by fine art teachers at a commercial art school that I should pursue fine art. So I went to the academy, which is referred to as a genius school, like Juilliard is the music. So right then I changed my career path to uh, a more practical to a more superfluous one. Whenever we would have holiday gatherings, we would all sit around and, for example, Christmas, we would open gifts and um, my Uncle Doug would be sketching everyone during, um, during the gift opening. Um, so it was little things like that where uh, it was kind of weird when we were younger. It's like, why are you drawing us? Stop drawing us. But um, it was actually, it end, ended up being really cool because then he would make a lot of, a lot of cool stuff with the sketches. Um, and he was, he was the funny uncle. He was the funny uncle, so. I traveled a lot when I was young. And um, art was always my interest. And it led me to um, see and experience cultures that uh, most people wouldn't. So it was a conduit for exposure to cultures. And we've had lots of conversations about the programs. And I think that um, sometimes just hearing his thoughts and his perceptions of, of what he goes through has made me more aware of of the quality of programming and what you want to see done um, and I, I think that that just has made me and everyone I work with uh, rise to the you know the challenge to, to do better. When I first saw Doug's artwork I was struck by what he did with such raw materials and the thing that struck me is I knew the woman that he painted whose portrait he did and I've known her for a few years, and so I knew some of the essence of her spirit. And Doug had captured her spirit on that paper in less than an hour of painting. So what struck me the most was how he captured the soul of the person that he was painting. So I think anytime you have someone in a family with a substance use disorder, I mean, you're going to, to have uh, struggles, and there's going to be times where you feel um, you know, why, why won't this person just stop doing what they're doing? Why, why won't they just, uh, just stop? And um, I think that what's important is that people in our family view, you know, addiction as a disease, and we know that, um, you know, this is a struggle now and that there are things that, um, you know, we, we can try and support and we can try and, and help. Um, and ultimately it has to be uh, a group effort, if you will. So I think it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not a sibling. I know my mom has dealt her fair share of distress of worrying, but I mean, when you meet my uncle, you'll see that he does not have that mindset of, of being stressed about things. I think that's, throughout everything, he's maintained such a positive outlook, which is great. I wish I could. I say all the time, you only get one life. Doug, I just want you to go slowly and, and, and go here, but it's as if he doesn't, he, he responds and answers when he converses, but he doesn't seem to want what I want, or does he? I don't know. And he's unable to accomplish it. It's frustrating. I've always had, always had a very strong, supportive family, even though they, at times, didn't really understand me as much. The events that happened that made me homeless were due to two things. My ability to want to paint, no matter what, responsibilities would have to be um, curtailed. And because of that, um, I lost my studio and I had to live on the streets. But it really didn't sink into me that I was homeless until um, I started to become a drug addict eventually. But it, it was just the feeling that I was devoid from any um, self-preservation that I felt that it was bad for me to be homeless. But before up in that time, it was just a way to just continue my art career. He just really is, is amazing for, for not ever renting an apartment by himself, not having a job, steady job, doesn't 
drive ever, never got a license. He doesn't have a whole lot of things that everyone else has. But he, when you sit and talk with him, he's like a regular person. One thing I learned about being an artist is I learned the value of things, not the price of things. I developed a opiate addiction early because I was in a car accident. I was taking painkillers. And I wasn't homeless, but I was living in places where I was fixing up and very cold. I think the first time I ever tried heroin, I sniffed it. And it kept me warm all night. And I didn't think of the addiction of it, even though I knew very well there would be addiction if I used it once in a row. It was a necessary journey, I think, to get through to where I am today.